And on that note, I think we should probably go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm T.W. Cook, National Commodore, uh, and I have several of our National Committee members on that will be joining me for this. We are recording this um, session, and we'll, uh, it'll take a couple of days to make it available, but we'll push it out to the YouTube channel when we can. Um, if you have questions, um, you can, we're, we're going to have a Q&A session toward, at the end, and I've, I've saved up all the questions you've sent in advance, so we'll try to get through those. But if you have just a terribly burning question as we go, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask it. Otherwise, we'll try to get through the presentation part and on to the Q&A Q as fast as we can. There are a bunch of links to different things in here. And, uh, I'll send you a follow-up email um, shortly afterward with those, so don't feel like you have to like scramble to write them all down. All right, let's um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Josh, if you to advance to the next slide. So that's me. My email address is there, but you all have it since I sent you an email this afternoon. So I'll go on to the next slide. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a really quick rundown on what's been happening in Sea Scouts lately. Uh, Hannah Carter, our national bosun, was going to try to join to talk about what's going on with the quarter deck, but she is leaving in the morning for report to nation and is still scrambling with uh, trying to get that done. So I'll run through her slides. We'll talk about uh, the training side, communications, and a bunch of other stuff, uh, and then we'll get on to the questions and answers. So next slide, please. So Sea Scouts has actually changed a lot over the past decade. Uh, so a number of us have been in the program for a while, and sometimes these things kind of sneak up on you if you don't think about it. The big thing, one of the big things is we're no longer a part of venturing. We're a standalone program in the BSA. Um, so a peer of Scouts BSA, Cub Scouts, venturing. Uh, and that's a, a different relationship with the rest of the BSA. We've tried in the process of that to reconnect ourselves to our BSA roots. One of the things that's happened through the years is that we've become pretty isolated. Uh, and that has really hurt us in our councils. Uh, along with that, we've changed uniforms. The new uniforms are more like scouts, less like the Navy. We've gotten rid of the petty officer, the officer enlisted split. We just have youth and adults. Um, a big change is the embracement of paddlecraft as an advancement track. That is by far our fastest growing part of Sea Scouts. The other thing we've done is we've tried really hard to build an operational infrastructure that are le is led by Commodores at every level. The idea is to have someone beyond the unit that can help us grow, start and grow ships. Uh, and that's really important. We've nearly doubled the number of Council Commodores last year. So a lot of us are, you know, wondering why do we need to change? Uh, basically, what we were used to do had stopped working and our membership was eroding pretty rapidly. And we had to do something. Next slide, please. So this is what Sea Scouts looks like for the last 10 years. The blue line is number of ships. The red line is the number of total youth. We went from over 500 ships to down to about 300, uh, around 377, I think, at the, at the low there. The good news about that is that what we've done has started to work. If you see that this last year, we flattened out and started to grow a number of ships. And um, I think the, the membership is going to, to turn around and follow that. So the changes are starting to work, but, uh, but there was really doing what we've always done was just wasn't an option. And, and here you can see pretty graphically why. Next slide, please. So from a pure numbers, we ended, at, ended 2019 with 391 ships nationwide. That is up from 377 at the end of 2018. We ended with 4,095 total youth that's down from 4277 at the end of 2018. About 200 of that drop came from two very large units that were actually ROTC units rather than traditional ships uh, that decided not to recharter with us. So uh, the actual peer membership would have been just about flat. Uh, that's an improvement over the past decade, certainly, but um, we're still got to go, got to do better. 
we have to find ways to retain our existing ships, grow them, and start some more ships. Next slide, please. Paddlecraft are really important. Uh, the easiest kind of ship to start is a paddlecraft ship because it's feasible nearly everywhere in the country. We can retread a scoutmaster as a skipper. A lot of councils have trailers full of paddlecraft that could be used. And the other thing is that it's just not as scary to BSA professionals. Uh, scout executives look at the notion of large boat sailing, large boat like 50 foot boats, and think uh, of that as big expense and liability uh, exposure. It's not necessarily, but it looks scary to them. Paddlecraft don't look any scarier than a scout troop. So we're looking for opportunities to promote those ships. That does not mean we're abandoning sailing or any of our traditional stuff, just that we're also growing elsewhere and that's how we're going to expand the program. Next. Everyone has noticed by now that uh, the uniforms changed. We have only one official uniform for youth and adults. That uniform was introduced nine years ago now. It was called the New Century Universal Uniform. And four years ago, all the other uniforms were discontinued. If your ship is still on non-standard uniforms, we'd really encourage you to transition as soon as you can. We're a small program and uniform fragmentation makes us look even smaller. It also makes it really hard to convince national supply to support our uniforms uh, when not everybody uses them. One of the implications, BSA marketing has a policy that discontinued uniforms can't be used in marketing or promotional materials. That's a BSA policy, not a Sea Scout policy. But that means that marketing related things like national flagship, um, those ships are required to wear the official Sea Scout uniform. There will not be any significant changes to the uniform in the foreseeable future, so don't uh, be scared about standardizing on it. It's not going to change. Next slide, please. All right, as I mentioned, Hannah can't be here, but I wanted to run through a couple of things the National Quarter Deck is working on. So next slide, please. They have tried really hard to, uh, to come up with a, a growth plan for 2020. They pushed out a youth-led recruitment drive for membership. Uh, there's some prizes that they're working on uh, sorting out based on growth. Uh, there was an email push. One of the things they've really tried to do is to figure out how to get in touch with the bosun of each ship. So they've asked for ships to set up an email address that they can share that will get handed down to the next bosun as those transitions happen. They've also, uh, the youth have actually been pushing pretty hard on uniform standardization. They produced some videos on that. And one of the big deals is that they really wanted to have a national Sea Scout event where everyone could come and get together and do stuff together. As we looked around, they conferred with their colleagues on the venturing side and made a decision that the most efficient way to do that would be to collaborate with them. So we're basically having a Sea Scout subcamp sub at Venturing Fest this summer where Sea Scouts can get together. Uh, that allows our, our youth to learn how to run an event like this from people who've got it figured out. Uh, but it also gives us a really cool event that we might not be able to run on our own. So I'd encourage you to, to push your kids to take a look at that. Next slide, please. Uh, there are national leadership opportunities. The national BOSIN nominations are closed. We've selected a new one, but haven't notified all the other candidates. So that announcement will go out probably this weekend, but we're still looking for regional BOSINs. Those are still open for another day or so. Um, area bosuns and then bosuns mates at all levels. SEAL program, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about later, but uh, we've expanded SEAL a lot this year and there are openings for that. Uh, we're looking for scouts for the Bark Eagle. Uh, Coke Cup is coming up this summer and uh, those are all great opportunities for youth. Next slide, please. So I wanna switch gears and talk about training and program. Cassie Johnson had a conflict and couldn't be here. She leads this uh, subcommittee of the National Committee but there are a few things we really want to feature. Next slide. SEAL I mentioned. Uh, SEAL has been refreshed for 2020. Um, it's offered in twice as many locations and for the first time ever in all four regions. We've also got not just sail and powerboat opportunities, but paddlecraft and whitewater rafting opportunities. So that's a big change. The other change is that the scoring has changed. Nobody is going to fail SEAL. Uh, that was, uh, I've heard from a number of, of youth through the years who I don't want to go to SEAL because I might fail. That's not going to happen. So if you could please uh, let all your, your youth know that and get the word out. Next slide, please. This is probably the most important thing, maybe the important, most important thing we're going to talk about tonight. One of our missing elements in Sea Scouts for a long time has been an ability to train new parents or new adults 
uh, and get them up to speed so that they can be useful. If you're familiar with the Scouts BSA or the way the old Boy Scout program run, ran, they had an introduction to outdoor leader skills that uh, filled that need. This is our analog to that. The idea is to onboard new adults. This is a course that's a, designed as a framework around safe boating. You can run it coastal or inland, large boat, small boat, power boat, sail, or paddle. The authority for this is council level. You don't need any national approval to run it. You can download all the stuff. If you have a council commodore, they are authorized to select instructors. If you don't, uh, your council training committee is authorized to do that. The full curriculum for this is on cscout.org. And there's a huge bonus for this. There are lessons plans in there that you get to take back to your ship that you can use to teach most of the apprentice and ordinary boating requirements. So there's a huge advantage for you uh, in this course. We have been running this around the country in a variety of places. All the reports I've gotten back have been really positive on it. But if you're not doing this in your, in your, your part of the world, this is your tool to help you bring on new adults and get them off to the right start. Next slide. Sea badge is another change. We have uh, not offered very many sea badges in the past. Uh, we have started offering a lot more sea badges in a lot more locations. We are coming up on a month where we have a sea badge in all four regions. There have been past years where we didn't have a sea badge in all four regions. Last October, we had a sea badge in all four regions. So there are a lot more opportunities. Uh, this is a great way to get your help our existing adults, but it's also a place to send uh, adult leaders that are maybe interested in Sea Scouts um, and would like to learn more. So cscout.org has got the complete schedule of the, the approved courses. There are a lot more that are being planned. Next slide, please. I want to point out that the 2016 version of the Sea Scout manual that you buy in the Scout shop is outdated. Uh, there have been some updates to that. We did this as a loose leaf manual for a reason. You can go to cscout.org, look in the Manual Resource Center, download and print the, uh, the errata pages and just swap them out in your copy. Or if you're like me and you carry this around as a PDF on your phone, if you go download the current version there, if you look at the title page, it says upgraded, updated to October 2019. That's your clue that the copy you've got is, is complete and, and accurate with current requirements. Next slide, please. Next, I want to hand over to Peter Schmidt, who leads the communications team for the National Committee. Peter? Yeah. Next slide, Josh. So uh, we just want to talk about two or three key resources we have on the, on the website. The first one rolled out about two years ago, the Best Practices Library. I know there was a question submitted in advance about this, but here um, we've got several things from, from PDF documents to uh, webinars to videos um, and then even sort of articles about things that ships or councils or areas have done that worked really well for them. Um, there's four documents about building support in your council. Um, there's several things on the recruiting that were done in the last year under Josh's lead and social media. Um, there's, you know, a recent one submitted in New York about a, a sea badge course it was focused on a certain community group uh, and it was offered in Spanish. Um, so these are all different things that have been tried in different places that worked. Um, so we've got 60 people um, in this call right now and I'm sure uh, each of us do something a little different in our, in our home units and, and things that might be unique um, that we could share. So not only go and check out what is there, but you know, look around at what works for your unit that might be helpful to other units and you can submit that um, at the top of the page. Um, there's information on how you can submit that to us. Uh, the next thing, Josh, um, is our program updates. Um, so another frequent question that we got or that we frequently see like in the Facebook group is someone, you know, might say, well, I didn't, I didn't know that changed, right? Um, so we started tracking these. Um, and it goes back to about 2016, every major change that's been made, whether it was uh, to the requirements, um, to awards, um, updates to the manual, uh, new program training releases. Um, so we update this every time. So, you know, every month or two, uh, if you navigate there, it's accessible from the, from the main menu at the top um, under updates. Uh, you know, you can check there and see, you know, if, 
something missed. Now, most of these also get, get sent out with the Commodore's Corner or end up as, you know, main page news articles on cscott.org. But, um, you know, it's helpful to go and check and see if you ever need to check. Um, I know there were several people saying that they missed uh, the May 2019 manual updates, you know. So this is a way you could maybe um, check to make sure that, that something didn't slip past. Um, so we try to keep this as up to date as possible. The last thing is uh, the calendar. It's pretty underutilized on the website, Josh. Next slide. Um, so if uh, your council or area is doing an event, um, you can add that to the calendar. It sort of shows what's going on around the country. Um, uh, you know, maybe if there's not an open line of communication, no area Commodore um, and other people in, you know, outside of your small local area don't know about an event. Um, it's a way that, that uh, others can find out about it or be inspired, you know, to create events, um, you know, sort of uh, that. So anyone can submit one, just click on the day and then you'll see that button there that, that's highlighted in red, create an event pop up, pretty simple to add. Uh, that's all I have. If you have any questions for us, um, you can reach any of us, uh, me or the other people on the communications team. We're just support at cscout.org, uh, and that gets routed to our help desk and generally pretty fast to respond. That's everything I have. GW. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Bruce Johnson. Bruce leads the uh, relationship subcommittee of the of the national committee. His primary responsibility and focus this year has been on our Coast Guard Auxiliary relationship, and I think you'll talk primarily about that. Bruce? Thanks very much. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this shouldn't come as news to anybody, but uh, we have uh, um, an agreement between the Boy Scouts of America and the Coast Guard Auxiliary that makes the Sea Scout program the official youth program of the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Next slide, please. Now, here are the, the key things that you need to know about that agreement. Coast Guard Auxiliary flotillas and divisions are encouraged, but are not required to charter Sea Scout ships. As of today, I'm aware of four flotillas that have uh, started ships. I know that there are dozens that are in the process of doing that, but I'm not exactly sure what the timeline is. Uh, let's see, uh, we're also looking to build partnerships with local auxiliary flotillas and Sea Scout ships. The objective there is to use auxiliary resources to help currently existing ships be stronger and have better retention. The other big change is that Sea Scouts, who are at least 14 years old, can become full auxiliary members even if the ship that they belong to is not chartered to the auxiliary. This will give them the ability to participate in all of the resources that are available to any other auxiliarist. Being a Sea Scout is the only way that someone who is under 17 can join the auxiliary. We're working on developing STEM opportunities now, and we're just beginning to see uh, the results on that, but I'd prefer to hold off saying any of that until we actually have the details worked out. Uh, you'll probably be seeing more safety at sea events uh, being held in new locations. There will be one this weekend in St. Petersburg, Florida, and they've never held one in the past. Next slide, please. Okay, how to follow up with the auxiliary. Well, the two main pages on the Sea Scout website, if you add slash CG aux, and that will actually take you to all of the rest of this stuff. So if you take away nothing else from this page, uh, just remember seascout.org slash CG aux. Uh, there is a great resource on the Coast Guard Auxiliary site. Uh, Oxby Wiki, and there's a tiny uh, URL your, uh, address for that. As well, there's a Facebook group that's open to both Sea Scouts and Sea Scout leaders and auxiliaries. And it's very active, but the posts are screened, so all of the posts relate to what the group is about. Uh, online workshops are being offered most weekends. Also, we have a, an online map that shows all of the auxiliary flotillas and Sea Scout ships. That's the URL for that. 
And if you uh, need some help with connecting with local auxiliary contacts, you can write me at relationships at cscout.org. I do want to leave you with one message. The relationship is between the Coast Guard Auxiliary and us and not the active duty Coast Guard. So if you're having any questions or concerns or gripes, uh, don't take it to the Coast Guard. Nothing good can come of that. And if you're really having problems, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and I will help you sort it out and we'll get to the bottom of it. I think that's it for me. Uh, is there another slide or? Oh no, I do have one more slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, we are working with uh, four other groups to um, refresh our partnerships. As you know, we've had a partnership with the US Power Squadrons, which has rebranded itself as the America's Boating Club. Uh, they've been a great partner for us in the past, but we think it's time to be refreshing uh, that relationship with the Power Squadron. We're just in the beginning stages of working on that. Uh, another very important partner for us is the American Canoe Association. We're working on developing paddling related resources for uh, ships, including instructors, manufacturers, and livery connections. We will be uh, at the National OA Conference this summer, and we're seeing what we can do to collaborate more actively with the Order of the Arrow. And we're also looking at some opportunities with Divers Alert Network. Um, all of these are not quite at the deliverable stage, but that's where we're focusing our energies this year. It's really exciting that we're getting some real payoff with this. And thanks so much for supporting uh, our efforts in that regard. So any questions, relationships at cscout.org, or you can put it in the chat box and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Thanks so hey, much. Hey, Bruce, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you can actually drop the U.S. Power Squadron name everywhere that you have it. Uh, it is now officially the America's Boating Club, and we're not using the Power Squadron term anymore. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, but the uh, uh, agreement that we have between the Boy Scouts of America and that group is with the U.S. Power Squadrons. So that's probably yet another reason why we need to freshen that relationship so that we're talking to one another the way we want to be. So thanks, thanks for that information. Thanks, Richard. And thanks, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to hand over to Tom Trefney. Tom leads the Growth and Retention Subcommittee on the National Committee. All right, thanks, CW. Next slide, please. All right, let's dispel the notion that Sea Scouts are a hidden gem and let's be visible. One way to do that is be more visible in our council and community. So attend the events in your, uh, in your Sea Scout uniform, you're a walking billboard. And you'll get questions and be ready to hand out your number and email address show that we're full up scouting citizens and participate in service projects and teach skills to troops and maintain boats at scout camps and also promote your ship by getting into council newsletters and facebook publishing stories in the in local periodicals all are good ways to be more visible which will raise the awareness next slide so avoid the group satisfaction with the current membership. Each ship loses on average about a quarter of its members each year. It's imperative that we continue to recruit, plan for at least 15 scouts and try to reach for over 20. We're seeing that a lot of, a lot of the units are down in the, the low single digit, or actually the high single digits. Troops are losing uh, about half their scouts by age 15, a good, Scoutmaster knows this, they recognize it. Try to build a relationship with a friendly troop and foster a path for the older scouts. It's better, also it's better to be on the inside, so try to get somebody in the troop to be an older scout liaison to work with your ship. And also don't forget schools, participate in school functions when you can, reach out to uh, career counselors at the school and figure out the best way to get in front of the students. Next slide. So we've been very successful in starting new ships. However, we're losing too many each year. If we cut the number of dropped ships in half, our new ship efforts will have more impact. A healthy ship spreads the effort across several volunteers. So 
And scouters from troops make excellent mates because they know the scouting way. They don't have to be boating experts. Boaters in the community, community can often, uh, they wanna pass on their knowledge and help out with teaching and, and events. Figure out how the ship will survive if you cannot continue. Skippers tend to go solo, but help is available. Don't be afraid to ask. That's all I have. Don't give up the ship. Thanks, Tom. Um, I'm gonna hand over back to Josh Gilliland. Josh is, leads the marketing subcommittee and um, has been working on a lot of, hopefully some of you have uh, participated in the webinars we've been running. Josh, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Thank you, DW. Good evening, everyone. Let's talk about marketing. Our overall goal is to provide materials that people can use to grow membership and promote themselves in their community. We have most of this material posted on our marketing toolbox. We have other material posted on YouTube, but we do try to have all links and everything posted under the marketing toolbox for you to use. Uh, this includes other material that we'll get into, but the point is we want to empower you to have the resources you need to grow. So if you go to the marketing toolbox, you can see lots of materials. We have flyers for charter partners. We have fillable forms for uh, creating flyers that can be printed for open houses. These can be turned into either static images and used on social media or next door. Uh, the goal is to engage your communities and we've made general material that people can use uh, to do that. We also came up with Facebook event images that fit the Facebook event layout. Uh, we want people to be able to have Facebook events that they can use and uh, have the material you know, fit correctly. Now our library of webinars uh, you can find on Facebook uh, under our fan page at Sea Scouts BSA or on the YouTube channel also at Sea Scouts BSA. Uh, we actually get more traffic with recorded webinars on Facebook. So I'm getting into the 3000 range, which is actually very interesting to see. Now we have had two webinars so far. Uh, we've had one at the end of January and how to start a Sea Scout ship in two months. We've had one on preparing Sea Scouts for SEAL. Uh, next week, we will have one on retaining tips for retaining Scouts BSA youth in Sea Scouts BSA. Uh, we will have one for paddle sports uh, later in March. We'll have one on using uh, and understanding Maritime Explorer Clubs. We actually have a DE uh, helping with that who's actually started many uh, Explorer Clubs that can be a feeder for Sea Scout ships and one on how to organize a nautical merit badge bay uh, day at the end of April. There will be more, but this is up through April uh, with the different content that we have coming out. Now, we have a variety of initiatives this year. We are collecting long cruise video testimonials. We have some from Sea Scouts down in Southern California. We have some from Sea Scouts in Northern California. We have a volunteer who's been editing those and putting them together. We've started also doing video testimonials about SEAL and have a few of those that have been posted as well. Uh, BSA actually had some of their videographers go on the propeller for a SEAL course last year and got some great testimonials that are now on our YouTube channel. And with our new official uniform, we have been doing a complete refresh of all of our marketing materials. And we came up with guidelines for those who actually want to help with this because people go out and do events and they take pictures and they you know, send them in. And that's great, but we have some guidelines that we need to follow in order for us to be able to use them. So we came up with the uniform guidelines. Now, those have all been posted on Facebook. They're in, um, you know, if you, if you want it directly, we can get it to you as well. Uh, it's gone out in the Slack channel as well. But you know, the, the goal is to disseminate and share information so everyone can use it. Now, our integrated marketing campaigns that we have for this year are uh, designed for new Sea Scout ships and uh, starting uh, you know, new units and, and recruiting. So on one half of this, whoever's not muted, please mute themselves. Uh, we have the National Outdoor Committee report that highlighted how the BSA lose, you know, Scouts BSA lose youth who are between the ages of 13 to 15. 
50% drop off rate. However, if those young people get into Sea Scouts, they stay in the program. So our message uh, is your next adventure. And we've been designing content that has that phrase, your next adventure. We're looking at getting necker chiefs done that have that as well. Uh, TW actually got a few uh, woggles made that have that, uh, which is really cool because, you know, going out and visiting a troop, being able to hand out something that shows Sea Scouts is your next adventure carries that message. Uh, to young people that we're the next adventure in scouting. On the starting new ship side, we have just add water. We've been working really hard with a charm campaign to help professionals and council executive boards understand that Sea Scouts is not an exotic program that's hard to run. You just need to add water. And what do most uh, scouts at camp do? They get on the water. They're in canoes, they're in kayaks, they're in stand-up paddle boards, they're doing the motor boating merit badge. So our message is just add water. And with our focus on starting new ships and landlocked places with stand-up paddle boards and kayaks, it makes it easy. Uh, it's, it was great to see that the Denver Area Council has been a model council at uh, starting new units and growing ships, and they've actually made CSPs that say just add water on them. Uh, they're doing some really neat things in Denver to grow Sea Scouts in one of our mountain states. So with that, I turn it back over to T.W. Cook and stand by and we'll answer questions at the end. T.W. All right, thank you. Let's run to the next slide, please. So I wanted to talk to you a little about things that are coming up. Um, this year, our relationship with the OA has changed. Uh, now that we're welcome there, we can elect youth into that. And accordingly, we're gonna have a large Sea Scout presence at NOAC. Uh, we've also looked, are working toward a large Sea Scout presence at the National Annual Meeting in May, that's in the DC area. We don't expect to make any significant changes to advancement requirements, uniforms, or really much of anything else in the Sea Scout manual at this point. Uh, we're doing kind of bug fix work, uh, but there won't be any any particular changes. We do plan to continue evolving the training. <clears throat> Next thing up is an update of ILSS that hasn't been refreshed in about five years, uh, and it needs to it needs to get uh, a little bit of work. So that's going to be undertaken this this summer. Uh, Bruce mentioned the Coast Guard Auxiliary relationship. Right now, the biggest thing going on is the nationwide interest there. Um, there are at least, we currently have four Sea Scout ships that are chartered by flotillas and at least 20 that are in discussions around the country. So that's going to be an enormously significant factor in the growth of Sea Scouts over the next couple of years. Next slide, please. So I mentioned this earlier, but applications are still open for area and regional bosuns. Uh, we really need good candidates for that. SEAL is critically important. Uh, this is our, by far our best uh, youth leadership training. It's a fantastic adventure opportunity as well as a leadership opportunity. We'd really like you to send some youth to that. Um, Bark Eagle still has, uh, we still are taking applications for that. National flagship competition is still open. Uh, and I also wanna mention the Sea Scout Leadership Awards. Those are available at the area, regional, national, and council levels. Anyone can nominate anyone for them. So if you look around you and see a worthy youth or adult, consider filling out a Sea Scout Leadership Award nomination. I'd like to also ask that if you don't already subscribe, you subscribe to the Commodore's Corner newsletter, you'll get a notification every month or so or more often if something important happens. If you go to seastout.org, look under updates and you'll find the link. Next slide, please. So my asks going forward are, are just a few simple things. Uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, alluded to earlier, don't ever brag about being the best kept secret in scouting. Uh, it's really stupid to brag about our terrible marketing in the past. We're gonna quit hiding, be a visible representative of the program in the uniform. I'd really like to see every ship commit to a growth goal, a net gain of, of a couple of youth in 2020. If you don't have a Coast Guard Auxiliary Connection, you should make one. And then maybe most important, build a relationship with the non-Sea Scout volunteers and professionals in your council or area. We need to be an asset to them and not a liability. 
Um, the picture you see here is of David Williams, who's the scout executive of Great Smoky Mountain Council, who showed up for the first day of summer camp in that uniform. So go get your scout executive to do that. And uh, if you can, we're probably in pretty good shape in your council. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to hand it over to Owen. Owen is our national director of Sea Scouts. Uh, he has just uh, landed at the summit and I think he's got enough connectivity to present. So Owen, would you like to take it away? Thank you, TW. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Josh, next slide. To echo many of the things that, uh, that our presenters have mentioned tonight, I'll, I'll cap on, I'll hit on a couple of those. Just want to give you a couple of just general program updates, things you may or may not have heard uh, coming out of the national organization. And just, just with regards to our newest program, STEM scouting, will we'll be rolling out in the next year. Uh, there's still a lot of discussion about um, how STEM scouting will also integrate uh, within our existing programs, but this is actually STEM scouting labs, much as we have packs, troops, ships, crews, these will be, C these will be STEM scout labs. Uh, and you, again, you'll see this roll out of, over the next year. It's a different, a different registration model. Uh, when somebody signs up to be a STEM scout, they actually pay $250 at the time. Uh, that includes all their materials for the year. It's shipped at their home. It's a much different model. So you'll see and hear more about that coming out as we go. Uh, we're under a lot of board direction to streamline, simplify all of our programs. And by that, uh, I, would, I would bring that back to some of the comments made tonight. Being relevant to our own organization is probably one of the greatest challenges all of our older youth programs have. And that's true for sea scouting, that's true for venturing and exploring as well. Uh, making sure that, that we find the relevance and we tell folks how we're relevant to the programs they most readily identify with, whether that's Cub Scouting or Scouts BSA. Uh, our year end national membership didn't have growth. I mean, we didn't have significant growth nationally, uh, but we did with units uh, for ships. And that's a big note. That's a big thing to tell folks about. Um, we know that we're about to take a, a large organizational hit with our LDS membership. Uh, though the LDS church officially did depart at the end of the year, that actually won't happen uh, on our rolls until, the, until March. And so just know that'll be a, a, you may see a bit of a ripple in discussion of that in your councils. Uh, NOAC has already been mentioned, so I'm gonna over that. And I believe a couple of folks have mentioned our presence for national land new meeting already. Josh, can you advance to the next slide? Uh, this is just, and I, again, some of the things that, that have been, come up tonight, some of the perceived barriers, and I, I, I use the word perceived very intentionally because I think some of these are, are legends that have lived out there uh, and that you know better than I. Uh, but this is what many, many folks think of, a, a scout executive, a DE. They think that they can't have a sea scout ship in their area because of these kinds of reasons. And I think it's up to us to continue not being that best kept secret, but to make sure we're relevant and we have relationships with our local units. I saw some of the chatter coming up on the chat group. I, I, there was at least one that mentioned that their ship uh, has been supporting the council uh, Klondike, I think, for the past 15 years. That's an amazing example. Uh, I would hope that you are have, have relationships and have links with the local troops in your area so that those kids know that they have an opportunity to go to the next level. Uh, Josh, can you flip to the next? Um, this is a visual that really shows what older scouting programs do. Uh, the first row of those red signs, that's 29 months. That's, that's a representative of 29 months. That's the average tenure for a member in the Scouts BSA troop. Right now, all the data that I've got up here is really based upon boys because we don't have enough history with girls in Scouts BSA. So this is, this is primarily on the male youth. But uh, we know that we lose 50%, half of our Scouts BSA membership between 13 and 15. The reason, and we survey them every couple of years on exit surveys, the reason never changes. It's because they're tired of hanging out with 11 year olds. That's, that's not the fault of the 11 year olds. They're, they're 11. That's what 11 year olds do. We've all been them. We've all had them. 11 year olds tend to irritate the best of us sometimes. But to a 15 year old, that's not who they want to hang out with. They want to hang out with an age group of their own. If they join venturing, if they join sea scouting, they will stay in the program an additional 16 and a half months. That's 57% increase in, in retention. That keeps kids in the programs. That means scouting makes that big of a difference to those kids. 
Uh, one thing that we couldn't figure out how to show in this data, that 50%, those kids who ended up joining back in, the data researcher that had pulled this for me, said uh, one, one thing she had noticed is almost all those kids had dropped from troops and then re-entered into older scouting programs. So these aren't just kids who slid from one program to the next, they left scouting. And yet they came back in because there was a new adventure, the next level was offered to them. Josh, can you flip the next slide, please? Oh, I thought I had one more in there. I think I had a slide that missed it. I, I, there was one other piece I wanted to be able to share with you, and that is on, um, we, know that in, we know that in sea scouting and in venturing, we have a large number of, of uh, multiples, youth who are primarily registered elsewhere. And when we ran those numbers this past fall, just know that about 40% of the male youth, 40% in our older youth programs in sea scouting and venturing are primaries and troops. And that's okay. I mean, I, I would love for them to be primary in shifts, but the fact that they're staying in scouting, that they're staying in scouting because they are involved in an older youth program makes a huge difference. And I think helps to combat the, 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 old, st the old story, the scoutmasters are afraid they're gonna lose all their kids to older youth programs, when the truth is they'll lose them anyways if they don't. So thanks for all you're doing, don't give up the ship, don't give up the good fight. And I believe, TW, we're now back to you for some Q&A. Thank you, Owen. Um, I asked you to, to send in questions in advance, and quite a few of you did. So I put those into, into the slides here. So let's go ahead and, and, and slide into that. There were a number of questions that were about insurance and about our council doesn't, own our, doesn't want to own our boats anymore. Uh, frankly, I'm surprised that any council still owns boats. That transition has been happening for a while now. Um, so everybody probably, if your council owns your boats, you probably need to be coming up with another plan. On the insurance front, that's a complicated world. Um, if you go to cscout.org and search for insurance or follow that link right there, there's an insurance fact sheet that was produced by BSA Risk Management that tells you exactly where you do and do not need insurance. Um, so that's the official word from, from BSA Risk Management. Um, I have to caution you that that could change the, uh, in the, as you know, this bankruptcy thing is going on and probably one of the things that will be impacted is insurance, but nobody knows quite how right now. For the moment, that fact sheet tells you everything that we know about it. Someone asked about how to do activities with other ships. And I think the real issue is how to find other ships. Uh, I'm not completely clear about that. But if the question is how to find other ships, there are a couple of ways to do that. One of them, uh, on Bruce talked about cscout.org slash cgox. One of the things that you'll find out there is a map that shows all of the auxiliary flotillas and all the sea scout ships in the country. So if you're interested in seeing what ships are around you, that's one way to do it. Possibly a better way is to talk to your area commodore. All of them has kind of contact information for all of the ships in their areas. So maybe that will help. Um, there was a question about uh, is there a forum or resource for units to share best practices? There are two things there. Uh, the resource that Peter showed you earlier, the best practices library on cscout.org uh, is the sort of official repository for stuff. And I'd encourage you to write things up and, and turn them in there. There's been a lot of contribution there. There is also the Sea Scouts BSA Facebook group, which is pretty active. And if you, if you just wanna have a, a public a discussion forum, that's your best bet. If you go to sign up there, it will ask you a couple of questions. You have to answer, the, the moderation team will insist you answer those to, to get to join. Basically, are you a real sea scout and uh, do you agree to follow the scout oath and the scout law or, or would be a sense of them. The reason those are there is because we get a lot of uh, attempted spammers wanting to join the group. So please uh, bear with us and answer the questions, but uh, that might I'm, be your best bet. Go ahead. Coming to you. Yeah, Doug, Doug Meach from Northwest. On the air, from the area level, uh, you can ask Tom, Tom Tiffany uh, about activities with other ships. He actually came up to the Northwest here and chartered one of our sailing boats for how long was it, Tom? Um, a week. And I yep. think that kind of thing is very useful. And we do try up here to share among ships and even meet each other on the long cruises, which I think is very useful. Thanks, Doug. Uh, going to the next slide, Josh. So 
This one was pretty broad. BSA is lacking tools that help units plan and communicate. There's Scout Book, uh, but it doesn't have any way to share documents. In my opinion, that is great because it would probably be terrible if it did. Uh, there are lots of ways to share documents. A lot of ships use Google Drive. If you have a, uh, an EIN, uh, an identification number that you use to get a checking account, you can use that to get a Google for Nonprofits account that will let, uh, let you share documents that way. There's lots of other ways to do that. There is a National Sea Scout Slack server. If you're interested in that, let me know and I'll get you signed up for that. Uh, we can add people there. Um, there's a lot of collaboration tools out there. Uh, I'm, it's not necessarily true that they should be owned. I guess I'll point out one more. There's the Scout Book forums. There is a Sea Scout forum there that gets some general questions, but it's primarily about Sea Scout support and Scout Book. Um, this bottom one, uh, National's emphasis is all about numbers and membership. Uh, don't care about quality program. That really isn't true, but the quality program alone isn't enough. And I showed you a graph that shows you exactly the result of the uh, if you if we build it, they will come plan, which we used to have. We are actually investing a lot in quality program. That IELTS uh, training, new training that we've done is an example of that. And we'll continue to do everything we can to support you in providing quality program. But we really have to go consciously work on increasing membership or we're going to die. That's as simple as that. Next slide, please. Uh, Keller Cook? Yes. Hello. Go ahead. Uh, this is Tony Anderson from uh, Ship One Up in Buffalo. Hey, Tony. Uh, uh, an issue that we have every year when we recharter is the fact that there's an insistence that you have a minimum number of individuals with the ship having the ship as their primary um, primary chartering organization. Yes. Uh, and the issue we typically have is mo most of the scouts that we get, the sea scouts that we get, uh, have been uh, along with the troop, and they don't want to make us their their primary uh, chartering organization because of their rank advancement with a particular scout troop. Uh, and in many cases, the scout troops, through their fundraising, end up paying for their renewals and their insurance and everything else. Sure. So if they come over with us then they have to pay. Uh, and I really think that that whole, uh, I realize what we're trying to do, we're trying to get more youth involved. But with us, it's been a handicap because our ch chartering organization, which I'm one of the trustees for, uh, we deal with uh, water-based recreation for people with disabilities. And it's not like it's a church or it's an offshoot of a, uh, you know, a, a Cub Scout, Boy Scout venturing group, at, you know, at a church or some organization that's got a lot of youth to, to work with. Uh, it, you know, it, it causes agita here every year if we've got somebody that drops out. And uh, right. So working with, I appreciate with, the, the, the challenge and that's a common it's a common problem. Our units tend to be pretty small and we tend to come from elsewhere. The scout executive has some ability to adjust uh, to adjust that. So one option might be to go sit down and talk with their scout executive and explain the situation. Our membership pattern tends to be pretty different. Uh, Cub Scout packs, you have these big uh, uh, recruiting events that generate a whole bunch of, of members and then they sort of fade out over the year. In our world, we typically have a small group of people, of young people that, that start small and then peer recruit and grow gradually. So our, our, our pattern is different. And, uh, you know, sometimes you can get a scout executive to support you in, in, deal, in overriding that. Um, but that's really your best bet. They're, the scout executives have a fair amount of power to, to adjust those requirements if they choose. Okay, well, in our situation, we this this past year we had our uh, first quartermaster 
Congratulations. Award. And it was the first quartermaster award given out by the council in over 30 years. And this young gentleman was also an Eagle Scout. And it's the first individual that the council has had ever that was both an Eagle Scout and a quartermaster. Now our current our current our current uh, bosun is an Eagle Scout, and he, now that he's finished that tour, he's uh, he he wants to work toward bosun, but our our council uh, we're considered an aggravation to them. Uh, we go into the uh, the the, sh the council store, and they hardly know that Sea Scouts exist. Uh, district executives are kind of ignore us. We, we're getting a new uh, a new council executive. I'm hoping to work with him uh, this coming spring as soon as he lands next month. But uh, you know, not only are the troops uh, afraid that we're going to steal scouts from them. For, for our ship, but it, the the last council ex or this you know council executive we had uh, did not want to support us, even even though every week a scout camp, I'm out there in my Sea Scout uniform, talking to the scouts, all the scouts at the at our camp Shelkoff, and doing uh, try scubas for all of the uh, scout students or. or uh, the scouts that are at camp. Uh, All right, Tony. You know we're gonna we need to to get back on the on the schedule here. Those are I certainly feel your pain, and they're not, and that's not an unusual story. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you offline and and maybe help you try to figure out how to attack that. Uh, and if anyone else has thoughts, uh, please feel free to share them in the chat. But let me try to get through the rest of this list. We're coming up on the top of the hour, and I promised everyone to try to finish. Uh, at least the main part of the program by then. So uh, one question came in about how to handle extreme growth by more than 200%. I have no idea how to handle it, but I hope it's a contagious problem. <laughs> um, recruitment ideas for US Coast Guard Auxiliary Charters. There's actually quite a bit of, of stuff out in the resources that Bruce pointed you to there. Uh, I don't know if uh, Bruce, if you wanna add anything to that other than to refer to the, the sites that you've got. I just want to mention that really the recruiting ideas for ships that are chartered to auxiliary flotillas would really not be significantly different from any other Sea Scout ship. Uh, there's a wealth of information on how to recruit on the Sea Scouts BSA website. And we do refer to refer people to that information from uh, Oxby Wiki. So uh, have a look at the stuff that uh, Peter has put together. It's really good. Thank you. So there were two or three people that add about, ask about advancement requirements uh, to include options for scuba ships. Until recently, we really just didn't have enough of those. We're starting to see more and more scuba ships coming along. I don't think that we have the expertise on the National Committee to do that, but we're really interested in supporting it. So what I'd like to do, if you think you do have that expertise and you'd like to work on a team to make a proposal for what that advancement would look like, send me an email and if we can put together three, two or three people that have the experience and in the interest in doing that, I will certainly take a proposal for advancement requirements for SCUBA to the National Committee and see if we can make it happen. Uh, the question deal is, that's not my thing, I don't know what they would be, but if you do, and it will help me with that, we'll see if we can, if we can get it done. Yeah, this is Tony again, I'll work with you on that. All right, um, send me an email and remind me about that and we'll get you on the list, okay? Okay. So someone asked, is there a chance we can make it so skippers can fill out an application and register new youth online? That actually came into being about two years ago. If you go uh, search on Google for a BS Scout unit pen management and read the process, the part you're looking at is about how to set apply status to active. If you do that, people can search for your unit on BS Scout, they can find it and youth applications can be submitted online. And the next question was about where do I find spars or can we not get them anymore? 
we have stopped supporting smart spars from national because so many people told us almost everyone has gone to scout book as they're tracking uh, there are very few, few people using them so we're not going to be providing them there are a few people that are still maintaining them if you ask in the uh, the uh, sea scouts bsa uh, facebook group uh, some of those people will send you one but uh, but that's not something we're going to continue to support next slide or is that it one person asked, do most ships have annual or semi-annual elections? My experience is that it's about 50-50, uh, some of each. Uh, and then the last one was how to help my council build a Sea Scout committee to support our ship and future Sea Scouters. Uh, the best practice library has a number of articles about that. The other thing I would refer you to in the, uh, the webinar series that Josh mentioned, there was a webinar on best practices for council commodores, which has quite a bit of information on this as well. You can find that either by searching the site or going uh, looking at the YouTube channel. That is the end of the pre-submitted question. So I'll open it up for anything else that, um, that anyone might have. The TW, this is James Ward, ship one, Mobile, Alabama. I was curious how many other ships other than mine are sponsoring a, a Sea Scout Academy, which, you know, we picked that up from y'all there in uh, yep. the Houston area. And I was just wondering how many others do the same thing. There are events similar to that, maybe not by that name, around the country, a number of them. Anyone got one that they're running that want to talk about? Well, there's one in Maryland that uh, is done collaboratively by uh, ships all over Maryland and Northern Virginia. That's how that'll actually be coming up in a couple of weeks. And there's an effort going on to import more or less the curriculum from our Texas Sea Scout Academy to the West Coast. I'm not quite sure what the status of that is. The San Francisco ships do an academy a couple times a year. We usually break it out and do an ordinary academy and then an able academy later in the year. Okay, cool. Uh, anyone else got one? All right, any other question? T.W. It's Jim Taylor at Ship 25. Oh, I just wanted to thank you. I've been doing this for a little over a decade, and this is the best communication I have ever seen. So thanks. Well, I'm trying, but I'm open to your suggestions. So y'all let me know what, if, what works and what doesn't and what you need. Keep it up. I've got, I've got one for you, T.W. This is Lisa from Ship 109 in Michigan. Hi, Lisa. Um, what's going to happen or what can be fixed about getting Sea Scout insignia? Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's depressing that we've got youth that are joining the ship and we can't get them in a proper uniform because we can't get correct color numbers for the, uh, the new century uniform. Uh, is the, are the numbers the specific problem? Yeah, they're, instead of coming in navy blue they're coming in either black or white well the white ones should be gone uh, so there was a bit of confusion the the version that national supply had for a number of years was on kind of a i don't know sort of a slate blue it wasn't a particularly dark navy blue and looked a bit odd on the on the current uniforms so they switched over to black background for that and the Sea Scouts BSA strips because that way it doesn't clash with anything. But in the process, they changed the SKU numbers, uh, which confused everything. So you got to be really careful and make sure you got the six digit SKU number version or else you'll get a mixture of blue ones and, and black ones. And I heard from a couple of people that the, the six or nines were out of stock uh, two or three weeks ago. But the last time I looked, they were back in stock. O and I are actually working on going through with National Supply right now to help them understand, to make sure we get them to, to prioritize the right stuff up. Uh, so we think we can, we can improve that. Uh, and they're interested in working with us. One of the problems we have is that there's a bunch of a legacy stuff that they've got laying around and they don't know which, what, what's what. So we're trying to just get that all uh, boxed up and, and sent away somewhere so they can focus on the right insignia and they have a lot less things to try to remember to keep in stock. So part of that's on us. We uh, we gave them confusing instructions. Part of that is that they occasionally have challenges with inventory management, but I think that's getting better. 
So I'm hoping that by summer, we'll have that a lot more consistent and, and, and better supply out there. Owen, is there anything you want to add to that? TW? Let's see if Owen is, Owen may have disappeared on us. All right, go ahead, Richard. Nope, nope here, just had to get to the right screen. <laughs> I was on the uh, scout, scout shop uh, screen looking to make sure they had all the numbers. They do, Sixers are back in, but it's out of order. Um, and uh, DW you covered it right. We're trying to get them to, uh, to clear out old inventory. And our largest desire is to make it a one-stop shop. Um, that's the big push that we're making with them right now is, uh, is giving them SKUs of products that we would like to see them carry so that you can actually have somebody go and buy everything they need from top to top to toe from one stop shop. That's the longer battle. Um, and, uh, but that, and it would probably be just internet only ordering because I don't expect they'll carry everything in all shops based upon sizes and those kind of things. But uh, that is what we're aiming for. So we're just now to the point where that's even possible. We've got enough ships have converted to a standardized uniform that the uh, quantities are, are, we believe the quantities are up to the point where they can justify doing it. So I think we're, um, National Supply has been pretty interested in working with us on this uh, for the first time in a while because we've simplified it to the point where it's tractable for them. Um, there were a number of comments here, uh, here and there about some people have good scout shops. Here in my home council is Capital Area Council in Texas. We have nine ships and another four within driving distance. Our scout shop is actually starting to carry the uniforms, including garments. So they have a pretty good supply of all that stuff in stock. Uh, there was a comment here about custom numerals and a number of people are, are using those as well. Um, I, teach, you know, I have a company here in Houston, uh, Embroid Me, and I'm sure they, there are equal companies all over the country that will custom make your uh, numbers into one single patch. Yeah, if, you're, if you've got three-digit number, it's actually cheaper to do it that way. Yeah, then they look good on the uniform, and uh, they're a lot cleaner. Yep. Um, with This is Tony Anderson again. With regards to uh, uniforms and, and patches, uh, with uh, the new uniform, uh, we've gone to the, I'll call it a, a light blue uh, insignias. You're talking about the position patches? Yeah, the position patches. Uh, should we tear our old ones off of our uniforms and put the new ones on, or what should we do? Yes, you're talking about these, ones like that. Yeah, yeah. here's why. Um, the old position, I did a, a test at Seabadge uh, this past weekend and put up a slide with six position patches, old style, and, uh, and a group of 40 participants of which at least half had been in Sea Scouts for a while. Nobody had idea, any idea which one was the mate and which was the bosun, uh, which of the three two-star ones were which. Even in Sea Scouts, we don't know what those things mean. The nice thing about these things is that they have words on them so people can come up to them and read what they mean. So if you're dealing with the rest of BSA, these are critically important because of, of that. Nobody likes the color very much, but that's not gonna change. So. Uh, get over it and uh, peel your old patches off and put those on. Thank you for the clarification. That, that's kind of funny because I just teach them that there's a star and a bar and a star and a stripe. You can try that, but I thought I did a test at our our, uh, our rendezvous on the Mariners quiz a couple of years ago. I put what I thought was a gimme question on it, asking them uh, a multiple choice question. Which insignia has a bar in addition to a star? Uh, and um, uh, less, than, less, than, less than a quarter of the kids figured it out. So the kids don't have any idea about that. So if our own kids don't even know what their skipper's insignia looks like, we just need to put the words on it. Even if they do, we're trying to be present in the rest of BSA. Our national bosun about four or five years ago now, the, the year when we're really in the midst of this transition, told me that she said, you know, I really like the new uniforms because when I show up at an event, instead of people look at me and it's like, why are you even here? Because they think I'm not some kind of scout. They look at, the, they pull around, look at my sleeve, read the words national bosun and say, 
hey, you must be the national bosun. Nice to meet you. And, um, you know, that experience actually applies to a lot of us. So use the, use the position patches that look like we're scouts, not the other ones. I've got other a questions. quick question. Uh, this, right, is a, yeah, this is Derek Cardburn from uh, Ship 1959 in Annapolis. Uh, one of the questions that I have is how do people manage all of the multiple uh, opportunities and responsibilities that are being placed on the scouts? So even tonight, we've talked about uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary, we've talked about the uh, Power Squadron, um, we've talked about them supporting uh, council activities, district activities, you know, Klondike Derby. You know, there's so many um, expectations. We had the uh, Venturing Officers Association come to our ship meeting on Tuesday, uh, you know, trying to get our Sea Scouts involved in those activities as well. You know, plus, you know, these are mostly high school students with you know, tremendous homework responsibilities and sports responsibilities and so forth. So how are people coping with this sort of avalanche of opportunities that are pulling at our, at our Sea Scouts? So that's a great question. Uh, you know, one thing is we need to teach them time management. Um, but the other is, is we have to be understanding and, and realize that school comes first and that they have, uh, they have a certain set of priorities that are ahead of everything that we do. Beyond that, um, I don't know. Does anyone have a want to make a comment on this? I would like to. Um, my background's in theatrical. Oh, let, I'm Leon. I I am the uh, skipper of the out of charter SSS Rampart in Newport, Oregon, and the uh, COR for 399 in the Dalles. Um, my background's in theatrical design technology and. As a result, I learned event management as a college class. And the first thing that, that you did is you set a date and a time, and then you let the details flow in the next 12 weeks. And if you can teach them to set a date and a time that's six months out, in the next 12 weeks, all the details will be put into place. They only need to know where to go and when to be there to begin with. The details can be established at the event. It helps if they can get the details beforehand, but it doesn't necessarily have to work that way. They don't have to plan, the point being, they don't have to plan the whole thing sitting down in one shot. They can plan a little bit at a time and work it around their schedule. Simple as that. Put it in the calendar, put the details in later. Simple. Thanks. And uh, Melissa, you just typed a comment in the, into the, uh, the chat, but you want to talk about that for a second? Sure. We have, um, as I mentioned earlier, two of our uh, scouts are in the OA and they're vice chiefs and they get called for stuff. And so we try to keep things fun and flexible without being super harsh on them. Um, I have a lot of college kids in our ship. Um, and so we offer, you know, if they can't make a meeting, we offer that they can call in um, to a conference call and still be active in the ship they know of all the details and if they can make it great if not then we just support them in anything they can do that they you know if they can't make it because of something else we support them um and you know cheer them on in any way we can but we're also understanding to everything that they uh have to um do because we understand that they are teenagers and that the life's pressures that they're under right. is more than when we were kids very w, can I can I just expand on that just a bit? I, I, I was skipper for 19 years, and what I found, yes, all, all of our kids are uh, really, they have a lot of demands on their time, and what I found was that the more supportive the ship was of them, the more supportive they would be of the ship and of their sea scouting involvement. So it wasn't that I tried to say you must do this but rather try to be there for them and let them know that we really cared and uh we had no trouble with it uh but it is it, it's sort of counterintuitive but it really works very well i have to agree we um have those kids that the ship is their their safe space because they're so more so much more excited to be part of the ship because we're understanding of things where maybe some of those other things that are not um as understanding 
and more demanding on them. It tends to overwork them. And so they find the ship exciting and fun, not just because of the great program, but also because we're not harping on them and breaking their backs over little nonsense. So if I may interject, uh, I'd like to, if, if Skipper Tamara Sokoloff is still on, uh, they have an open house next month and they have, you know, a lot of people signed up for it and a really strong game plan. Uh, Tamara, could you share uh, what you've done so others could try replicating it in their um, home councils for their own springtime recruiting activities? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much time we have, but the, the main thing I did this time around was I spent, um, you know, honestly, probably a couple of hours online going through every single school in um, the San Francisco Bay Area or San Francisco school district and went to their websites and got a list of contacts and blasted out a flyer for our open house to every um, middle school and high school PE teacher, class teacher, principal, counselor, um, and anyone that seemed like a logical person who might pass on information about Sea Scouts. Um, and I got it posted in a ton of school newsletters, um, handed out to parents at parent teacher conference nights, um, and stuff like that. We, we had a, we have a bit of an easier way of recruiting because we can reach the middle school kids because we have, um, a Maritime Explorer Club as well. And that is new for us but already a huge source of membership. Um, we've had it chartered for about three months and there are 15 kids in that. And um, nearly 40 of our RSVPs are for kids that, in that age range. Um, we already have a few that are ready to graduate up to Sea Scout. So it's kind of becoming a, a membership stream for us. But really just getting the word out to as many people as possible has been, has been kind of key. And it took, a, it took a bit of work at first, but it's now just flowing in. Well done. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Sounds like, uh, sounds like it's gonna be fun. Other questions? So we're 15 minutes past the hour and uh, I'm happy to stay on as long as people wanna talk, but I do appreciate that it's late East Coast and uh, if uh, some of you need to, need to drop, uh, don't be shy. Uh, I'll try to get the recording posted probably tomorrow night. Uh, so I'll send out an email with a link to that. Anyone got anything else they'd like to speak about or ask about or? This is a great This is Tony again. Uh, this is a great way for everybody to get together though. And I think, uh, you really hit on something by putting this conference call together and uh, moving forward, I think it's gonna be helpful. I know it's been helpful for myself and I'm thinking a lot of other folks that are tuned in here uh, will agree with me on that. One of the things that I, that I hear a lot, I spent three years as a regional Commodore before this there are a lot of people out there that feel very isolated. We're, we're spread pretty thin. There are not a lot of ships around. And I want everyone to realize that you're not alone. There are other people that have got ideas that they'd be happy to share with you, uh, encouragement and, and everything else. So, uh, and one of my goals with this is, is, is really just to try to address that. You're, you're, the problems you're facing are probably not unique. Uh, there are people that are dealing with the same set of challenges and, um, Hopefully we can give you some ideas that will maybe help you with that. Anyone else? I've got one real quick. Go ahead, Jacob. Um, we made an, a mention earlier about the LDS scouts and, and I would uh, encourage all of y'all not to discount them quite just yet. Um, the new youth program that they have come out with is a goal setting program. And uh, being LDS myself, there have been a few scouts or former scouts who have approached 
myself and, and another counterpart of mine that we work as commissioners and their son's goals have been to complete their Eagle Scout. Um, so there are a few of them out there that are still interested in the program. Uh, it, it may be worth reaching out and seeking them out to, uh, to see if we can bring them back into the program, if just for another year or even two. And I think Sea Scouts is a great way to, to be able to do that and, uh, and maybe retain them a little bit longer even. So that's something to think about. So that's a good point. The other thing to think about is that your council, your district has a drop list of all the kids that dropped out of scouting that, um, and we've had some experience. I don't know, Tom, if you want to talk about uh, experience with that in our local ship here. Yeah, there's, uh, we, we actually rescued, a, <laughs> rescued two scouts that had already dropped out of their, uh, out of their Boy Scout units or Scouts PSA. And uh, they found us somehow, I think just because we had uh, the awareness and the council's kind of high and they, they ended up finding the ship and uh, joined and now, one of them's super active and, uh, and now their parents are getting involved. So it's, it's a really good story. But they were, those were cases where someone, um, you know, the camping wasn't for them, but sailing was, and uh, there's, there are youth like that out there. So um, theoretically you're, you know, Leon says that we can give him that list, which is really uh, unfortunate, but go talk to your commissioner. Your commissioner has access to that list. So there's, there's ways to get it. Um, uh, don't stop. If the, if the DE won't share it, uh, take another path. Um, or, or just ask the kids. Uh, they, all, they all have friends who dropped out, uh, the ones that came from Scouts BSA side. So there's, there's ways to find them. Hey, Debbie, I don't know how to get me up bigger on the screen, but uh, this is Kurt Ware, Central Region Commodore. One of the things that we've done, we've had some success, and we've opened it up to uh, anybody that's involved in scouting. On April 18th, we will have a, uh, like a round table. It's an all-day event. People come in on uh, Friday night and then all day Saturday, and you get to mingle with uh, other Sea Scouters, and you get to talk about some of the things that we're discussing tonight and some best practices. And, um, you know, Jay went to, I don't want to steal any of his thunder, but he was at the National uh, Power Squadron meeting, and they talked about retention and ship growth and different things. So we're going to have breakout sessions on that. We're going to have some breakout sessions on how to work scout book and uh, other things. And one of the things that we're going to do, uh, and TW will be there at this meeting, but one of the things we're going to do is we're going to sit down and try to talk about reachable goals with each unit and the area in the region because if we do it and they're all reasonable and they're all obtainable, we should be able to see growth in the, not just our region, but in all the units. So it's good fellowship in that, and we'll get that information out to anybody. I know it's travel for everybody to come, but if anybody would like to come, we negotiated rooms for $50 a night, and that is for double beds. And uh, so, uh, you know, two people can share the room or, you know, they wanted to have more than that, but it's, it's affordable for a week. And, and there's an airport uh, within an hour there. Indianapolis is within two hours. Chicago is two and a half hours north. St. Louis is two and a half hours south. So it's kind of in the center of the universe. Yeah, opportunities to get together and spend time with, with other, other people are, are, are super valuable. I think that uh, it's an interesting forum. I'm looking forward to, to seeing people. Northeast region has a bridge of honor and, um, and uh, other stuff coming up. I don't know if you want to talk about that one, Ben. You're muted. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our, uh, Emily uh, Newell, our uh, regional bosun and her team has been planning a 2020 uh, C Scott rendezvous and bridge of honor at the Pocono environmental uh, education center in Digsman Ferry, uh, Pennsylvania and the last weekend in March and uh, we've invited uh, Sea Scout units from throughout the uh, region to spend the weekend with us where uh, during the day Friday Saturday uh, we will have uh, advancement classes uh, followed by fellowship activities uh, the theme that our youth quarter deck has uh, overlaid the weekend is Star Wars so uh, there's the uh, 
uh, Rebel Alliance and you know, Stormtroopers. Uh, and uh, the idea is for the uh, youth to be able to uh, enjoy themselves, uh, get some advancement training, and uh, allow uh, us to recognize uh, many of them with, uh, with awards. TW will be there. Uh, we also recently found out that our, uh, our regional uh, president, uh, Scott Christensen, uh, will be attending. Uh, Scott attended our Sea Badge course in October and finished his log uh, about two weeks ago. And we hope to be able to present him uh, with his Sea Badge pin at that event. Uh, he happened to mention, uh, that is, Scott mentioned to uh, Shane Haldane, our regional director, that uh, he was going to be attending and uh, was able to wangle a, an invitation from Emily to attend. So uh, we've, uh, this is new for us. Uh, we've had our Bridge of Honor for the last uh, several years at a, a Holiday Inn uh, in uh, New Jersey, uh, but it was just a dinner, a banquet. And the, uh, our youth members and some of the adult leaders uh, wanted to have something different where if they're going to be traveling uh, at great distances uh, to also, uh, in addition to meetings, having some uh, training uh, meetings, uh, leadership development meetings, and opportunities for fellowship other than just uh, having an awards banquet. So uh, we found a venue that will accommodate us and, uh, uh, and uh, we hope to have a lot of fun that weekend. So I, I guess I want to pull out one of the things that you said. Uh, one of the things that these guys did is they invited their regional president to, to come to Sea Badge. And uh, they've got a, a regional president wandering around in a Sea Scout uniform, uh, uh, encouraging uh, our, the councils to support Sea Scouts. So I think one of the things that we do a poor job of in general is interfacing with the above the council, the areas in, in the regions. Uh, not just the professional side, but the but the volunteer side. Regional presidents are are pretty useful guys or, or gals that get around uh, to a lot of councils, and having them speaking for us is is very powerful. So I think Northeast Region has has really pioneered that, but everyone else ought to be thinking about that too. How do we build those connections? Whether that's your council president. Uh, so how many of you have invited your council president to go sailing with you? approximately zero. So take that as a, as a, a challenge. Um, I know we had um, the, re, uh, until recently, area director for area three got invited to go sailing uh, with Sea Scouts down in, in Galveston Bay and went around and talked to every scout executive in the area about how fantastic it was. Uh, so that one simple invitation in a, in a half day on a sailboat generated enormous goodwill across multiple councils. So don't be shy about uh, offering things like that. So this, uh, this open house we've been hearing about over here in the, in the chat um, in San Francisco sounds like uh, the sort of thing that someone should invite uh, council president to. So you might think about that as you're, uh, uh, as you're, as you're on it. But they look at, they don't have any idea we're doing these things. These are cool things, they're fun fun for everyone, they're influential on the kids. So uh, use them to, to generate goodwill in, in our councils and in our areas. TW? Yes, sir. May I speak about my uh, spring long cruise? If you must. Uh, well, uh, it's an Go opportunity. Right ahead. No, it's, it's, an it's, it's like a Sea Scout Academy, but more. Yeah, we've put this on, this is my 10th year uh, participating in it, and I'm the director of the event now. And uh, what it amounts to is uh, units from all over come down to Galveston, and we have classes in the morning, we have on the water activities in the afternoon, and we get a lot of rank advancement. The kids teach the kids, the adults supervise, and we get a lot of rank advancement. Last year we had 627 individual rank advancement items signed off at this event. And so it's a, it's a well worth, it's worthwhile time to spend with kids. So if you have anyone in this part of the country that might be interested, have them come on. I'll put the link in the chat. And that's something that evolved. The original version of that was just a couple of ships getting together and sharing some resources. 
and it grew to you know three or four ships and then it's grown into something much bigger than that right but that started as a, as just a collaboration between a couple of skippers it was me and george and i did this he was with 1996 and i was with 846 and we started pulling this together and then we started inviting other ships and right. it's grown so but yeah. it, it's you know that you you don't have to start with a full blown event like that. You can start with find another you know buddy up of another ship and make something happen and grow it. Thank you. So thanks for that. Anyone else got anything you'd like to share or ask about or anything else? I'd like to. I guess maybe the question or Tamara or any other. Uh, folks running the Maritime Explorer uh, Club. What what do those what do you have those kid, kids uh, do in that program versus the ship? Or do they meet? Do they commingle? Do they meet separately? And um, how often do they meet? So for for our group, um, first of all, the the really big thing about it that's been good is that I've had. Um, about four of my 21 year old adult leaders run it. So they've kind of graduated out of Sea Scouts looking for things to do and they're loving having a job in Sea Scouts for them. Um, they don't meet with us. They meet at the same location as us. So there's some overlap at our Sea Scout base on Saturdays. But like someone mentioned earlier, uh, 16 year olds hate hanging out with 11 year olds. So we try not to be a burden on the normal Sea Scouts. Um, they met tonight, uh, they did some knot tying and some basic, um, parts of the boats and played Pictionary with parts of the boats. So we've kind of modeled it after the apprentice requirements, but dumbed down a little bit more and then added in a few more of the fun, ordinary requirements. And we're just kind of building it as we go. I'd be happy to share with anyone what our little Explorer manual looks like, um, but it's basically the apprentice requirements plus compass and relative bearing parts of our specific boats, et cetera. And then our weekend activities are really just a series of field trips. We've gone to the local Coast Guard base. We've gone to check out nearby tall ships, um, aquariums, things like that. Um, and we'll sprinkle in some kayaking days, sailing with the Sea Scouts, and just kind of mild on the water activities. Awesome. That sounds pretty good. And if you want to, if you want to share that manual, if you'll send it to me, I'll share it with everyone. Will do. Thank you. Anything else? So I see a couple of UC Seattle guys up there. There must be something going on up that way. Jeremy. And whoever's with you. Down here, Skipper Skipper Al Bruce. Hi. Hey guys. So what's going on that way? Well, we're doing our uh, spring planning. We're working on our rendezvous. We're working on a salt adventure. We're working on seal. We got uh, plans going for uh, opening days and just getting the boats together. Uh, Doug Beecham and I talked today about uh, working on some recruiting plans and ideas for that area. So it's been a it's been a, a good productive week for us up here as far as the planning and augmentation is set up. Uh, boats doing well, we're cleaning up the waterway. Uh, it's a good time, good weather today. Sounds excellent, good to hear it. Anyone else want to share what they've been working on? Yeah, I mean, it does meet you, uh, Northwest. We are developing a relationship with uh, a local wooden boat um, group, the Center for Wooden Boats. And I found that to be very useful. We have been involved with their wooden boat show, which uh, was uh, useful for us. And I encourage everybody, whenever there's a show, get in there. Uh, we have also worked with them and their boats because they have a lot of resources. So Sea Scout ships do not need to have a lot, a lot of their own resources. There's plenty out there to use. Thank you. All right, anyone else uh, got something to pipe in with? Can, can you hear me? I uh, can. 
Jimmy, uh, this is Tom Siniglio, Ship 480 out in Connecticut. Hey, Tom. Um, good to see all of you. Um, I had just two or two or three anecdotal uh, experiences I wanted to share with the group uh, before everybody went to sleep. Um, I was really involved as a district commissioner, so I spent a lot of time with Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and explorers and and, and ships. Well, I I was at one of these uh, family campouts. And this happened actually two or three different occasions. And I would, you know, notice that the, you know, there's a young lad that's, you know, maybe a tiger or a wolf scout, but then he's got a, an older sister that's like 14, 15 and kind of like a babysitter. And they said, I hate camping. I hate bugs. I hate this. I said, what do you think about sailing or going on the water? I would love to, but I can't afford a lessons. I says, well, I get, we have a program. You don't have to pay for the lessons called sea scouting. Well, that basic elevator speech I did three times. And uh, one ended up at the Merchant Marine Academy and the other two are at, at the Coast Guard Academy. So it's, it's basically uh, finding a niche because they were bored. I mean, they were kicking stones and looking away and their lights, their eyes lit up as soon as they said, you mean I don't have to do camping? I don't have to be with my little brother. I don't, I can do my own thing. So please don't forget that everybody has a brother or sister and uh, sometimes they don't want to be with them. Yeah, so great point. In fact, uh, I mentioned a, a national bosun that uh, I had a conversation with Patches. She showed up because a tag along who her brother was a Boy Scout. And, um, and uh, you know, that led to her being national bosun so, and, and quartermaster. I think it's, a, I used to ex try really hard to recruit sisters of Boy Scouts because they were exactly as you're, as you're describing. These days, they're all uh, working on their own eagle. Uh, and we're, we're, we're going to see an interesting inversion right now because there are a number of girls that have, have gotten or almost gotten their quartermaster. They'll be quartermaster first and then eagle which is not the normal order, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but that's going to be, uh, that's going to be really fun. But, um, but recruiting from families, recruiting from scouting families is easily because easy because the families get the program. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do that cell job. You just have to get the kid interested in the activities that, that we have. So that's a, uh, it's been pretty successful for uh, several of us. So it's running on late, but we could take another comment or two, or we can shut it down to your preference. Anyone got anything you'd like to ask or offer? Oh, and any closing remarks? It's late there at the summit. I'd just like to know how many of you would like to do this again? And if so, how often would it be helpful? Definitely again. Uh, once a month, once every couple months, uh, just for no other reason than to bounce ideas off one another. I see a quarterly showing up pretty often in the chat over here. Yeah, I think quarterly is probably a good idea too. And if yeah, it was quarterly, quarterly we, we might be able to even suggest, you know, have a, have a focused topic for a night and bring in folks who might be specialists or who might be having successes in certain areas where others might be having challenges. Well, I'd that like to also good. have, I'd like to maybe also we can have some case studies like, um, you know, this one was mostly presentations because there's a lot of stuff that I thought we should tell you all. But, uh, you know, once we get to steady state, there'll be less of that. But So maybe both some specialists and, and maybe some uh, reports on events like the San Francisco recruiting event. Maybe we can get uh, the recap on that next time uh, how it played out or um, uh, some of the other things that people are doing. And there's a lot of things going on around the country. Uh, Richard could probably talk about how spring break long cruise goes. Uh, we'll be done past that by then. Um, the other thing to the, the youth quarter deck is, is working on an agenda for a similar event for bosuns. So we'll be getting on the email out to all of you as soon as we get that scheduled. But they're planning at this point after uh, after spring breaks um, wind down a little bit. They uh, plan to do something similar. Uh, we'll have a new incoming quarter deck, the national quarter and regional and area quarter decks all change over on June 1st. 
uh, national bosun selection is done but not announced. Uh, the regional bosun selection is coming up in a couple of weeks. So uh, by the next time around, we'll have both the new and the old quarter deck that uh, they'll be able to participate in that. Uh, and they've done some good stuff this year. This is the first year we've really had a, a really fully functional quarter deck at the national level, and uh, they've done a lot. So um, maybe we can get some reports from them as well. Is it, would it be useful to hear what's going on for you all to hear what they're doing? Yeah. So, okay. I'll uh, talk to Hannah about that. She is uh, on her way to represent Sea Scouts uh, to the nation starting tomorrow. So watch um, the usual scouting blogs and newswire and stuff for, uh, for the ongoing reports of that. All right. Um, GW, one more time. Yeah. Tom, Tom, Tom Singler again. Hey, Tom. Um, I, I'm not sure if the rest of the members on the call know, but I'm um, deputy for public affairs for the Co um, Coast Guard Auxiliary. So I'm in charge of the new um, the publication called The Navigator and Nav Express, which is not only the online, but also printed and handed out to all the congressmen and senators and, you know, all the um, stakeholders for the Homeland um, Security and the Coast Guard. So any pictures of youth, especially diversified youth, having fun, smiling uh, on the water as a Sea Scout, I would love you to overwhelm me with those photos, captions, and stories. Uh, and, and please, anybody on the call and anybody who dropped off, just give me the who, what, where, when, and why. I'll make up uh, a story uh, that reads according to what was given to me, and I'll send it back to you to uh, edit. And then once I get your approval, I'll forward it up the chain to get printed. And I think between the BSA side of the house and the Coast Guard Auxiliary and, and uh, you know, the, uh, the other partners that we have, there's got to be some kind of a newsletter or, or something that we can pass along to give to the, you know, the Boy Scouts and, uh, and, and these other organizations to see what we're doing because uh, they don't realize you're having fun until they get wet. Sounds like a great plan. That's a great publication too. So it's a, it's a very professionally done publication. So anything we can do to get featured would be great. So, uh, and that's true for, for everyone. You know, I'd love to have, we've got great cooperation from Brian on scouting. Uh, so uh, in, and from other places in the BSA, you know, the auxiliary has been great about publicizing us, but, um, but so is BSA to the extent that we have provided materials for them. So don't be shy about, uh, about sending stuff in. If you can't figure out where to send it, uh, send it to me. If it's an auxiliary thing, I'll send it over to Tom. Um, but uh, feel free to use me as a focal point for that. And I'll get you in touch with the right people. We'd love to have some material. GW? Yes, sir. We had a, we just did our Sea Scout Academy in January. You spoke of a minute ago. Uh, to give you an idea, we had 148 youth, 84 adults, 32 different ships, 13 councils in seven states that were in attendance at this event. So this is a this is a good thing to do. If y'all can do the most it. fun one yet, fun fun one yet. So <laughs> I thought I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. So that was a great event. All right. Any other last uh, comments before I shut it down? If not, thank you all for joining. Yeah. Someone said something. Is there any um, materials that are specifically targeted to our districts? Um, I've we, I, we we've got a new roundtable commission. Um, a bunch of roundtable commissioners, and they they challenged me to put something together to show what Sea Scouts and high, other high adventure programs are doing that are different than just the Scouts. Um, I, I've had some pushback uh, from some of the leaders in in the district about Sea Scouts being detrimental to their programs, um, but those leaders have since been removed from their places of uh, in their units by their charter organizations. So um, now I have new interest from the leadership side in knowing more about it. Is there anything, a, a two minute video I can stick on a projector and shoot at the wall? Um, anything like that available do you, that you know of? Josh, you want to talk to that?
Yes. So uh, we do have lots of overview videos that are on the YouTube channel and on the um, uh, under the marketing toolbox that you could download and look at. The other thing that you could do since this is a roundtable meeting is you could highlight that uh, Philmont will have a commission at, during Commissioner Week a Sea Scout venturing and exploring uh, uh, week for commissioners on servicing the young adult programs. And that's like June 9th to the 13th. And it's on the Philmont schedule. Like highlight that. Now, if you're, you know, if you need more commissioner support, highlight at your district roundtable that there's a, you know, that there's training coming up that your commissioners could attend uh, because the young adult programs are mission critical to retaining youth and scouting. You know, they, they understand numbers that, you know, that gets their attention very quickly. And the fact that we can retain youth in the program really gets their attention. So highlighting that there's material available to help commissioners support uh, Sea Scout ships uh, is one message that you can send. Yeah. Okay. And maybe, there's maybe, a, I can, maybe I can send you an email and, and talk to you more about that. Yeah, please do. And there's a, there is a two minute or, or so promotional video that was done just last year that's pretty current. Uh, all the videos that we've been talking about, if you go, there's a Sea Scouts BSA, all one word, YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on that all channel. Of them, all of them are, are, are out there, but there's a, there's a decent promo video out there that might be helpful to you. Okay. So the other thing, I guess, you know, we're seeing, there's so much membership pressure in BSA right now that, that councils are a lot more open-minded about where they get their membership from for the most part. So a lot of, uh, I'm seeing a lot more interest in a variety of councils in older scout programs. The the chart that Owen showed you from the the conference that was from the outdoor conference last fall, I believe it was, that um, that showed you the the membership uh, extension from enrolling a kid in in our programs. Uh, that information is uh, scout executives are starting to pick up on that and starting to realize that. You know, it's a lot cheaper to just keep a kid than to have to recruit a new Cub Scout every time you want more members. So um, the enlightened ones are, are, are getting it. Uh, and I think it's still an uphill battle, but we're, um, we're making more progress on that than I think we have in a long time. All right. I really am going to shut it down this time. It's, uh, we're an hour and 45 minutes into this. Thank you, all 36 of you stuck it out with, uh, with me. Uh, thanks for that. Everybody's got my email. I would love to hear from you about what would be useful, um, suggested topics for future ones and, and anything else. So please use it. Uh, thank you all and good night. We'll see you um, at the next one. Josh, right. you go ahead and shut it out down. Aye, aye. Thank you all.